Warning, the folks are coming. Well, fuck, they're already here. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Vulgarity for Charity. That's right, our annual charity fundraiser is starting in just a few days, so set aside a few bucks and start thinking about whose face you want Eli to compare to a rancid lunch meat. Vulgarity for Charity, because not enough charity drives have fucks in them. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hello, boys. We did indeed evolve from filthy monkey freaks. Goodbye, boys. It's Thursday. It's October 27th. And it's Black Cat Awareness Day. Because stupid beliefs don't have to be religious, but it does help. <laughs> it does help, yeah. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Ted Cruz's New Jersey, hey. Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, he went to Princeton. This is The Skating <laughs> Atheist. On this week's episode, a New York politician will put his money shot where his mouth is. Marjorie Taylor Greene supports the North in the Civil War by accident. Yeah, uh-huh. And we'll learn that the ritual knife of Satanism is a pumpkin carver. But first, the diatribe. Oh, Tim Allen, you dumb, dumb fuck. And don't get me wrong, I'm not expecting next level brilliance from a guy who got famous by grunting, but I expect more than this. Now, there's a good chance you've already seen this, but let me fill you in if you haven't. A clip from an old interview with Tim Allen is going around thanks to a viral TikTok. And in this clip, Tim Allen presents possibly the stupidest argument for the existence of God that has ever or indeed could ever be presented. And keep in mind that we're talking about a world where look at the trees ranks amongst the most common retorts to atheism. So here's the relevant clip. My, one, my older daughter's atheist. And I said, well, philosophically, it's a weird, it's an irony there, too, because atheists don't believe in God. Well, there has to be a God for you not to believe in. And my daughter uh-huh. goes, ah, 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 she's still in therapy over that. Right there. <laughs> I mean, not for nothing, but I believe that was his daughter's reaction to the argument. Right. But both the stammering and the therapy, just not for the reason that Tim thinks she's left speechless by his stupidity and his dumb ass has taken a victory lap around her. But yeah, according to Tim, the tool man, Taylor, the fact that you don't believe in something is proof that it exists. And as was pointed out by the TikToker who drew our attention to the clip in the first place, this is coming from a guy whose most famous role was Santa Claus. Now, this this actually isn't the first time I've come across this clip. It comes from an interview on Norm MacDonald's podcast from like a year or two before he died. And a lot of people forget this because of the way that we kind of after somebody dies, we kind of glaze over their shitty parts. But Norm MacDonald's fucking sucked. He was a right wing misogynistic bigot who spent a lot of time pretending white comedians were in danger of censorship. And anyway, so leading into this part of the interview, you really get a taste of that. Right, the, the the prompt for this conversation is basically Norm Macdonald going, so how about them fucking atheists, huh? What a bunch of fucks, am I right? And then and then Tim Allen, no surprise, agrees. He actually starts off fumbling his way through the fine-tuning argument like a fourth grader that had to memorize the Gettysburg Address, and then he offers up the nugget of wisdom you just heard. In order for you to not believe in something, it must first exist. And I've got to say, I'm impressed with how wrong this manages to be. Consider just how much you have to power down the critical thinking parts of your brain to even utter that sentence. I mean, step one in checking on your argument is personal substitution, right? Would I find this convincing? Well, let me consider something that I don't believe in, that some people do believe in, and imagine somebody trying to convince me it's true. What would be the equivalent argument? How would I respond to it? Any attempt to do this whatsoever, right, even by the simplest of sapient minds, refutes it. One second of devoted critical thought and you realize, oh, fuck, I just proved the existence of Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster and the Tooth Fairy. Right. In fact, you kind of have to go out of your way not to realize how bad this argument is. But for his part, when it's posited, Norm Macdonald just sits there in awe of it and then fucking dumb struck and dumber struck sit there and pat themselves on the back for two fucking minutes about how pwned we non-believers just were. 
And yes, there are certainly more sophisticated arguments in favor of theism than this one. I, I don't know that there are any that rise all the way to the level of sophisticated, but certainly more sophisticated than, well, how would you even know what not to believe in if there wasn't a God? But, but to be honest, this is the kind of shit that you tend to get when you ask Christians why they believe in God. I mean, some of them memorize complicated apologetics because, you know, they've heard that it's the one simple trick to convert atheists. But but when they're even remotely unguarded, they trot out shit like this. They toss out such patently absurd justifications that it's hard to believe they're even being serious. And when they do this shit, they accidentally admit the real reason they believe in God. They refuse to think about it. Any series of words that ends in therefore God exists is good enough when you've put a mental wall between yourself and doubt. It doesn't matter if the argument is convincing. Hell, it doesn't even matter if the argument is coherent. You're not allowed to think about it. And 99 times out of 100, neither are any of the God believers you offer it up to. I mean, I've spent a sizable portion of my life learning their top level apologetics and the refutations thereof. But when I encounter a Christian in the wild, I'm almost always confronted by something this asinine. Hell, I was recently challenged to explain where heaven comes from if there's no God. You know, now, that's not to say that there's no value in studying these more advanced arguments, right? Thinking about what you believe has a benefit all of its own. And when you come across somebody who's genuinely questioning their faith, th those arguments come in really handy. But when it comes to people who just want to argue about God at like the family reunion or Thanksgiving dinner or the company mixer or whatever, you're far less likely to encounter the Kalam cosmological argument than you are something along the lines of, well, if there was no Jesus and what were all them BC people even counting down to? And again, I need to emphasize this. That is an actual argument that I was presented with once. So yeah, enjoy the commentary. I'm always glad to see shit apologetics go viral. And this is a pretty easy one to dig into. But remember it whenever you find yourself frustrated because you can't find the argument that your brother or your sister-in-law or your uncle or whatever finds convincing. Remember that an awful lot of Christians do find this kind of shit convincing. And rest assured that it's probably not a problem with your arguments. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the commutative and associative to my distributive Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to sum things up? Do I talk next or? Do I talk next? It doesn't matter. Huh. <laughs> nice. In our lead story tonight, to <laughs> that, was a, that was a super smart fucking joke. In our lead story tonight, we have a follow up on a story we covered last month about how much public money was flowing into Jewish schools. That story, of course, was based on an expose in the New York Times. And since A, New York is a pretty liberal city, B, the New York Times is pretty influential, and C, they were Jewish schools instead of Christian ones, it looks like there was some government follow-up. The State Board of Regents approved a new set of rules that strengthen the basic education requirements of private schools receiving government funding. The State Education Commissioner has gone after a few specific schools, and most significantly, the largest school featured in the article was charged with fraud, pled guilty, and has agreed to pay back over $8 million in restitution. Hey, bud, did you buy lunch with your lunch money, or did you buy... Magical death futures. You have to tell me mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. This is like a, a good step, but it's hard to imagine any other instance but religion where stealing almost a billion dollars could be met with put it on my desk and nobody gets in trouble. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, this is a story about schools. So, yeah, well, yeah though, fair. <laughs> so, yeah, the school at the heart of the story is the Central United Talmudic Academy. One letter off, people. One right? letter off. Try harder. So they have over 5,000 students across several campuses. You might remember them from the original story. They were the school that gave a standardized test to their entire student body to prove that they were too teaching real facts, only to have literally every single student fail. Well, it turns out that taking money to teach math and teaching bullshit instead was only the tip of the iceberg when it came to their fraud. Uh, for example, they paid their teachers partly in cash and undisclosed benefits so that they could underreport their incomes and pay lower taxes. They set up no-show jobs for friends of employees. They claimed to serve meals to students on days the school wasn't even in session. And they used tax dollars intended to feed impoverished children to throw parties for the staff. Oh, cool. it's like uh, Wolf of Wall Street, but sad and dark in this case. Yeah. yeah. And with literally any Jews. So, the, you know, the opposite of a Scorsese. Yeah, film. right, right. Exactly. You even can recognize who the bad guys are. Sam Rothstein, right? It's a casino. <laughs> there you go. Main character. <laughs> Played by? Robert De Niro, famously so <laughs> Jewish. Famous <laughs> Jewish actor. And, you know, and they treat his Judaism with such respect. In yeah, they film. really Let's do. <laughs> 
All right. So in addition to the eight million plus in restitution and fines, at least two school officials were charged criminally. One was sentenced to two years in prison and another was given five years probation. In addition to that, the schools agreed to replace its entire management team and the state has imposed an independent monitor to oversee their financials for the next three years. Or wait, sorry, no. Actually, the school gets to submit a list of potential monitors and then the government like can choose from them. What? Which sounds batshit fucking crazy. <laughs> they get to handpick their oversight. But still, apparently that is better than whatever bullshit we were letting them get away with before. Cool. Yeah, maybe we can appoint a special headmaster to keep tabs. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that'll work. <laughs> Uh, it breaks my heart to tell you this, Heath, but I had to Google your joke twice before I realized it wasn't a Harry Potter reference. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because the Ministry of Magic pointed Dolores Umbridge after Dumbledore. Okay, escaped. all right. So, yeah, no, I feel like people can fill that in. Of course, yeah. it should be noted it both. that the eight million bucks that Kuda is paying back is about nine hundred ninety two million dollars shy of the amount of money yeshivas have siphoned out of public coffers in just the last four fucking years, according to the original Times report. I don't even know if that qualifies as a drop in the bucket unless we're calculating homeopathy style. But but the fact that the state is standing up to financial abuses by religious schools in any way is an important step forward, especially when you consider what an important voting block they're potentially pissing off by doing so. But hey, New York City politicians worried that this is going to be labeled anti-Semitism in the next election cycle. A quick piece of advice for you. Do Christian schools next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it's a great rhetorical advice to have it. You're ready. But it's also your fucking job. This is your chance. This is yep. your chance. Uh, do the atheist schools. Oh, no, they had, they're real schools. Oh, they're already real. No, that's they're real, real, real schools. schools and you have to know all the where all the paper is. And in way too local news, you know, it's easy to focus on the bigots in this country that are running for major offices like Marjorie Taylor Greene, J.D. Vance and whatever giant bug is puppeting Herschel Walker's body. But it's important to remember that Christian bigots are running for office all over this fine nation of ours. And I personally got an unpleasant reminder of that when Hammett Meta over at the Friendly Atheist blog let us know that a preacher best known for being caught prophetizing to kids in his history classroom is running for town council really, really close to where I live. Like, Ugh. like really close to All where right. I live. All right. You want me to come swaddle you or you want me to send the bail money in advance? What are we doing? <laughs> Both. So, oh, God, not, not to belittle your story, but as a resident of Waycross, Georgia, it's really hard not to call you a sweet summer child right now. Eli. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fair. That's you. fair. I, I feel this. My story has been topped. Yeah. So the asshole in question is David Paskevich, and he looks like Shooter McGavin got a makeover from Queer Eye for the straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> but but the old one, not the new one where they also try to make you not a heinous person anymore. Mm -hmm. Just the just the one where they gave you a haircut. And as I mentioned, he's best known for 16 years ago when he was recorded by a student taking time out of his high school history class to tell students that they should become Christian, that evolution wasn't true and that Noah's Ark was real. Jesus. And by the way, if you're wondering how the district responded back then, well, they gave Paskevich, a slap on the wrist that literally didn't matter, and passed a new rule in the district that students weren't allowed to record teachers anymore. Oh, oh! so they're using the old reduce emergency calls by manning the phone less often approach. OK, yeah, sounds like that. And OK, just new rule. If a teacher ever says stop resisting the Lord, they have to wear a body cam from now on. That's, yep. that's the rule. Mm -hmm. That's another job that could really do with a body cam. Required. Sure yeah. could. Yeah. Sure could. So, yeah, Peskevich is still teaching in that high school, by the way, like right now in the Jesus year of our Lord, Christ. 2022. Now, you might wonder, is he still preaching to his students? Yeah, he probably is. But we don't know because they're not allowed to record it. Right. Luckily, Peskevich is also doing the recording himself, as he recently posted a sermon to Facebook where he compared the LGBTQ community to rapists and pedophiles. So here's the quote, quote, when I was growing up, you heard about people that were homosexual. They had given into sin and had gone in that direction. And then it became, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. And now they added a plus sign to it. What's the plus for? What will the next letter be? Will it be R for rapist? What? Will it be P for pedophile? Cool. Yeah. Any other children's book titles off the top of your head, Kev? You got any other good ones? What the fuck? He does. He does. Will it be H for human trafficker? Will it be B for bestiality? This is insane. End of real quote. This is insane. I am scared of initialisms. This is pandemonium. I can't <laughs> handle it. 
All right. Well, if it helps, man, the B is already taken. So I just, <laughs> so I, can, I can reassure you on that one. Yeah. So yeah, that guy is running for town council. Now, luckily, I should point out he is running against an incumbent who will probably beat him. But the fact that this guy even made it to the like, I got enough signatures and I'm running for office stage is fucking insane. Yeah. One last thing about this story. And I don't want to be the guy who brings his fucking next door fights onto his podcast. But don't you? I think this illustrates a dangerous point. <laughs> so when I read this story, I went to my local, you know, citizens of town group to post about it on Facebook because... As you know, if you're a member of any of those groups, there's sort of a grab bag of people from all different towns in the area. So that post got denied by the mod of the group who then wrote me and said, hey, this is about this different town. All the posts in this group need to be about the town we live in. And then I pointed out that the group rules specifically said you could post news about other towns. And then I also linked a bunch of posts that are about other towns. And then they just blocked the post again without comment. And look, I'm sure the lady who mods this Facebook group I'm in isn't a bigot, right? She's just <laughs> some rando who doesn't want to make trouble. But what we need right now is trouble. Yeah. It needs to be troublesome to be a bigot. And I'm in relatively liberal New Jersey. And I have a podcast with over 26 million listeners. To get we, my don't, we, to. we don't have anywhere near 26 million listeners. Dude. That's the population of like Australia. Yeah. No, wait, 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 wait. Sign up. I don't understand. I read that the Daily has like 2 million listeners and they're super boring. So you, we'll, why we'll would explain we not later. have? We'll explain later. Okay, whatever. 20 million listeners. Either way, no. one way to make trouble for people is to run for office. We've had some listeners do that this year and even more secular candidates. So please, please keep that up because for every one of you not running, there's probably a Christian asshole out there that is. And yeah, to be fair, Eli apparently thinks we have a larger listener base than the population of Florida. So in his mind, at least we'll be fine. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't, you guys are going to have to explain. Mm -hmm. And in... Lobob's news. Sitting U.S. congressperson and Patronus, who shows up whenever you say speak with a manager three times, Lauren Boebert, <laughs> continued her campaign trail and gave common sense advice about our political reality. Basic idea, it's kind of the opposite of Tim Ryan's advice. Tim Ryan said, nobody's coming to save us. But turns out that's wrong because the murdered son of God is coming to save us with a sword coming out of his mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's also going to be a, an army of zombies and some like Krakens or Kaiju or something like that during a political event about who should be in charge of our government at the national level. She said, the end is nigh. It's going to be great. Vote Republican. Yeah. yeah. Right. So look, if the ship is sinking, it probably doesn't need a new captain. If the ship isn't sinking, but you insist it is, it doesn't need you as captain. So either way, the ship don't need Lobos. <laughs> no, it does not. So Bobert was appearing at a GOP fundraising event. And here's what she had to say exactly. Quote, I want to start with two words. Let's go, Brandon. What? So real bad start. Uh, apparently, the number line is different when the end gets extra nigh. I'm assuming oh, it just okay. it, yeah, yeah. Chain, it dilates it. So it's compressed. Yeah, she, she continued from there. We are in the last of the last days, and that's not a time to complain. That's not a time to grumble, be dismayed, be disheartened, but a time to rejoice. You get to be part of ushering in the second coming of Jesus. And of course, the rest of the event was collecting big donation checks from stupid rich people who have to pretend they kind of believe the Bible is real for that purpose. Yeah. She's, it's pretty fucked up when miscounting three is the intellectual high point of your quotes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever we read a quote like this, I think about how we'll occasionally get an email. Then someone will be like, you're ruining everything because the real Christians are all really groovy. And this is just like one or two people. And it's times like this when I want to remind those emailers that, the horse locusts are a coming is an applause line for half of this country. <laughs> yes, right. So yeah, the apocalypse, it's about to happen and nothing matters. Also, it's very important that we dehumanize the LGBT community while we're waiting on nothing mattering. That's the message from Bobert. And that's why she spent a good deal of her time last week combing through line items on the State Department budget and then <laughs> slamming her laptop closed in a fit of rage when she found out that we gave a grant of $20,600 to a group in Ecuador to promote diversity and inclusion. It funded 
three workshops, a two-minute documentary, and 12 drag theater performances. So she started typing very angrily into her journal at that moment. The world is about to end. But we are spending 3.2 millionths of 1% of our national budget on <laughs> art that confuses me, and I will not stand for it. And then she actually tweeted this. She said, note to self, the Department of State has excess funds that need to be cut next year. Okay, all right. Well, look, I feel like the State Department is getting a great deal on drag theater performances. Thank no? you. That's a, that's a very good deal. But like, I, feel, I, I, I honestly want to talk to their drag theater performance guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think this group is giving us a deal to get their foot in the Don't do it. Ecuador. Oh, okay. okay. One other detail on Lobobes <laughs> recently <laughs> from Ecuador. This is very important. Her neighbor is pretty sure she murdered his dog Omega with a gun. Ah. So, okay. It turns out she did not do that, probably. A, a local police report shows that a different person living in the neighborhood shot Omega after Omega attacked some livestock. So, fine. Okay. She didn't murder the dog this time. But if someone shoots <laughs> a dog near my house... Exactly zero of my neighbors would ever possibly think it right. was me yes. ever, that's ever, true. ever. Yep, yeah, that's important. Lauren Boebert cannot say the same thing. I hope she dies when a, a dog shoots her in the face. Punch. <laughs> it's all right. So you can say that, right? In the crossfire. You can hope. While I call Andrew and see how much of that I have to beep, uh, we're going to hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. You have to be allowed to hope, Andrew. You can't be Pope. <laughs> What else do we have? A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she wants. If it's a legitimate race. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massage. The one feeble little silver lining of the Dobbs decision, the one that overturned Roe versus Wade, is the way that it's forced the mainstream media to reckon with a lot of the shit we've been warning you about for years. Like we've been talking for damn near a decade on this show about the dangers of Catholic hospitals choosing religious rules over secular needs. One of the most off-cited statistics on this show is the fact that about one hospital bed in six in this country is in a hospital that's controlled by the Catholic Church. Now, if this was just a matter of ownership, it would be kind of bigoted for me to even point that out. But it isn't. The standard of care is different in Catholic hospitals. They all but universally refuse to do abortions regardless of the level of medical need. Miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, get fucked. They'll refer you to the next hospital over, which for most of the country probably isn't in the same town and may very well also be a Catholic hospital. But it's far worse than just that. They also generally ban all contraceptive surgeries. They often won't even let their doctors give out or prescribe birth control. Hell, the Catholic Conference of Bishops, which oversees all Catholic hospitals in the country, forbids even referring patients to another facility for contraception. Well, the good news, to the extent that there can be good news buried in this, is that more people are starting to notice the Washington Post did a recent expose about the problem, and that's gained a lot more traction than pieces like this normally garner. I know because I've been screaming from the rooftops about this problem for years, and the only other voice I've ever heard on the subject is my echo. Advocacy groups are finally starting to make their way into mainstream outlets and point out shit like how unlikely it is that a patient knows what religion their goddamn hospital is. Hell, there's even some low-level noise about passing laws restricting their rights to stay so goddamn opaque about all this shit. Nobody's yet going as far as proposing laws that would make them just provide all the goddamn legal medical shit the doctor thinks they should provide. I mean, it's not like men are being regularly denied important medical care, but it's a start. And look, if you want to understand the scope and depth of this problem, you really need to focus on the low regard that Catholics have for women in general. I mean, they're one of the few remaining religious holdouts that ban women from basically any role of leadership at all. So that gives you a clue. But another stark reminder showed up in my inbox this week as well. It came in the form of a Catholic podcaster advising women in abusive relationships to stay put so that they can do their part to bring their abuser to salvation. Now, this story is actually meta-misogyny. It starts with a TikTok star going on some sexist-ass rant about he, how he'd never pay child support if his wife ran off on him with his kid. Well, Adrian Fonseca of the Catholic Conversations podcast took issue with that, but he took the wrong issue. In his mind, the real problem was that the women run off in the first place. 
And as part of his justification, he opined, quote, if a wife has a husband who is a deadbeat husband, who's not making money for their family, who's even abusive, I'm just going to say it because it's true and people will freak out, but it's true. And then, of course, because religious people can never make a direct point, even if they just said, I'm just going to say it as a lead. And he starts talking about saints that were abused and points out that, quote, they stayed and endured the abuse. They offered up those sufferings for the salvation of souls, but most primarily for the salvation of souls for their husband, end quote. So there you have it. The real victim when a husband abuses his wife is the husband's soul. And the same mindset that informs that kind of demonic sexism is also making medical decisions for women against their will. And on that happy note, I'll hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in Super Pack news, hey, podcast listener, remember way back in the A segment of this podcast when I <laughs> said that you should run for office? I probably should have been a little more specific about how I wanted you to go about doing that because <laughs> last week, openly atheist candidate Mike Itkiss, running for the 12th Congressional District, decided to prove his dedication to his platform of legalizing sex work by releasing a sex tape with a porn star. Oh, Jesus okay. Christ. First of all, I like this. Also, I like this better than most of the debate formats I've seen, if I'm being honest. Okay. Like, I think that would yeah. work better. Yeah. Right now, I, I feel like you could have talked Herschel Walker into more than one of them, at least. <laughs> okay, I feel like he still brings props, though, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and John Fetterman does way better. I feel like it's it's great for yeah. everybody uh -huh. involved. <laughs> now, I want to be clear here that Mike is running as an independent and has almost by his own admission at this point no chance of winning this deep, deep blue seat. But he's raising important issues and is openly secular. It's just. I'm not sure the best way to do that was a sex tape titled Bucket List Bonanza released on Pornhub. Though, <laughs> Mike, you got to have at least a pun in there with it's got to have a <laughs> right? sex sure. like Fuck It List Bonanza or something. Thank you. There you go. Much yeah. better. Yeah, but Mike disagrees with me. In an interview with City and State, Mike said, quote, if I would just talk about it, it wouldn't demonstrate my commitment to the issue. And the fact I actually did it was a huge learning experience. And it actually influenced items on my platform, end quote. I learned a lot, yeah. So, turns out, it's real. It is real. And it's at the crest of the lady. It's right at the crest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but in his defense, look, he got us talking about the issue, as well as whatever news source you got this from. Yes, a bunch <laughs> yeah. of news sources are talking about that. Yeah, credit where credit's due. Uh, also, one last thing about this story. I just want to be super clear that we here on Scathing Atheist actually agree with Mike when it comes to legalizing sex work. And like funny as this story is, I mean, Atheist Candidate makes a sex tape. I got to put that on our show. But the, the point he's making is that sex work is perfectly fine and should be a legal thing between consenting adults and that liberals don't need to be like walking the fence on that. No, they shan't. Yeah, but I know some of you out there might be skeptical of our dedication. So... <sighs> Asa, Akira, if you're listening, I am willing <laughs> okay. to have sex with you to prove my dedication to liberalism. Mm -hmm. Reach out to the show. Okay. So you think she's one of the 28 billion, do you? Is the Daily not boring? <laughs> Why would more people listen to them? They're, it's so boring. Inexplicable. And in bearer of bad noise news, the biggest problem with Greg Locke is that he won't shut the fuck up. That's not the only problem with Greg Locke, of course. Even a completely silent Greg Locke could still hate minorities, burn books, and harass innocent Dunkin' Donuts employees. But his failure to shut the fuck up is certainly his worst feature. And by so much that the county he's in is considering legislation to counter it. Specifically, officials in Wilson County, Tennessee, are about to pass a new noise ordinance meant to quiet his loud-ass services, which can apparently be heard five goddamn miles away from his Global Vision Bible Church. Okay, guys, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I do know that this ends with him owing a billion dollars to the Sandy Hook families. I just, I can see <laughs> the end of the path, if not the road. <laughs> All right. So, so this came to light during a recent meeting of the Wilson County Commission, which kind of devolved into an impromptu game of taboo because nobody wanted to specifically say Greg Locke's name or the name of his church so that they couldn't later be accused of directing the ordinance at an individual or 
showing whatever bullshit level of magical hostility it takes for the Supreme Court to overturn otherwise <laughs> legal decisions. You were mean to the cakes. What? Right. <laughs> Instead, the representative from the sheriff's office brought up the fact that they'd received 41 noise complaints the previous month, more than half of which involved, quote, a church down in the west end of the county, end quote. Okay, mm -hmm. this taboo thing we're doing is crazy. Just just listen for a second. You hear the 44 creams, 19 sugars. That's him right now. You hear that. <laughs> He's at a Duncan five miles down the road. We're hearing that. Side note, just in case anyone new is listening, uh, that's actually Greg Locke's coffee order. Heath is not exaggerating. <laughs> I also don't know why I'm perfectly happy for new listeners to figure out on their own who the wool dasher mizzle killed to finally take down Manscaped Man. But every time Heath brings up this joke, I feel like I need to clarify yeah. for anyone. Because it's so fucking it's, insane. It's important to me. Wait, who you. did the wool dasher mizzle kill to take down Manscaped Man? We will get, the we'll high get there. Pay attention to your own ads, man. God. The high fake guy. Oh, yeah. I remember that fight. Okay, cool. Yeah, All got right. it. So the board itself expressed concerns about being dubbed anti-Christian if they did pass a noise ordinance because of, I assume, the long history in rural Tennessee of persecuting Protestantism. And because of the ubiquity of Christian immunity to laws, the deputy felt the need to clarify that, quote, the sheriff's department, if we're asked to, we will enforce any law or any ordinance by this commission, end quote. And sure enough, within minutes of this clip being posted online, Greg Locke started screaming persecution and vowed to break the law that didn't even exist yet. <laughs> When a local news affiliate posted the clip, Locke responded with a baffling comment that insisted they were not loud, that they were only loud because they met in a tent rather than a church, and that they were intentionally loud and everybody else can fuck off. And perhaps realizing that this was a bit contradictory, he added a far pithier <laughs> all caps response that simply read, revival is not quiet, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, siren emoji, flame emoji. Okay, everything he says in his life is the beginning of a messy couples fight in public. It, <laughs> including what he's typing, apparently. You know he's in public. Like, no, I will not keep my voice down, siren emoji, flame emoji. 44 creams yeah. and 19 sugars. Okay, now I'm picturing Greg Locke rolling around with himself in an Applebee's parking lot. and you know, Winner gets to fuck my wife. <laughs> So, yeah, he's loud and irritating. And according to one of the commissioners at the meeting, lock services, quote, will rattle your windows of your car if you're anywhere near, end quote. But we're talking about a guy who literally banned masks at the overpacked services that he held in the middle of the goddamn pandemic. So something tells me that concern for the comfort of the community isn't going to be enough to convince him to quiet down. So here's hoping that they pass this ordinance and arrest him for it, if for no other reason than the bright pink tirade video that we'll get to see in response. <laughs> God, it's so good. Can't wait. It's all coming together. Cannot wait. <laughs> and finally tonight, we have some good news and some bad news about Marjorie Taylor Greene. The good news, she tried to do a big photo op in honor of the fucking Confederacy and she missed because she's an imbecile. <laughs> the bad news, MTG is being seriously considered by Donald Trump as a potential running mate in 2024. And that's... Insane. So, okay, I guess it might actually be good news, depending on how you look at it, depending on how it works out. Mm. But it all contains the context that we live in a universe where Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump are both viable candidates in a national election. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, as much fun as it is to think about Kamala Harris going toe to toe with the gazpacho police lady. What's good <laughs> oh, for skeptocrat headlines tends not to be good for the country. That's a really good rule of thumb. Acknowledged, but gentlemen, I'm sorry I have to disagree. Sometimes the bit is just too good not to be worth it. Come on, Madge Tadjkaj, you can do this. V, P, V, P, V, P. So, according to Robert Draper of the New York Times Magazine, the possibility of MTG being Trump's running mate has been discussed repeatedly within Trump's campaign team since the beginning of this year. And apparently MTG has three qualities that are very important to Donald Trump. One is loyalty. So, you know, after Mike Pence refused to help overthrow American democracy with this one simple trick, Trump's been <laughs> looking for other options. The second quality is her fundraising ability. And most importantly, she seems to understand the key to American politics, which is, of course, very confident lying. Or as Draper puts it, she's cognizant of the fact that the attention economy rewards hyperbole. Yeah. So, yeah. Also worth pointing out that they're looking for a new person because Trump won't run with Pence again. 
right? So like Pence, on the other hand, would sign back onto the ticket with the guy who literally tried to have him hanged for failing to overthrow the government on his behest in a heartbeat, right? <laughs> Honestly, I'll be shocked if Mike Pence isn't hauled off stage of the first debate by security while wearing a blonde wig and screaming, <laughs> is this what you want, Donald? Is this what you need me to be? Pence, I heard, claimed he might run. He did a little winky thing at a at a talk at Georgetown where a bunch of people walked out because, you know, he's a bigot. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there was a QA and a at the end and somebody asked like, oh, would you uh, vote for Donald Trump? And he was like, well, there might be another candidate I like even better. Wink. And that was him saying, maybe I'm going to run myself. We'll see. Yeah, but but cool. you, it won't but matter. No, I mean, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm running to my, yeah, you, exactly. know, you and yeah, I, exactly. I running you, to you and Ron DeSantis, you can get your own little cart together. Oh, Ron is way too realistic. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so back to the MTG story. Maybe she is cognizant of the attention economy rewarding hyperbole, but <laughs> there's no way she's cognizant of what that sentence I just said means. No, nope. mm, no. She gets confused by soup and pull-ups and very small dishes for a tree. And <laughs> I guess that explains the other part of her story this week. MTG decided that she wanted to celebrate the Confederate failed states of America, by visiting one of their many monuments in Georgia. And like I said before, she missed. MTG posted on Truth Social, Donald Trump's thing. Tonight, I stopped at the Wilder Monument in Chickamauga, Georgia, which honors the Confederate soldiers of the Wilder Brigade. I will always defend our nation's history. And she included some photos she took at the monument, which is a monument, to be clear, for the Union Army. Yep. Yeah. She's standing there. See, they even had a bunch of black friends. Wait a <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah. She, she tried to find a Confederate monument in Georgia and failed. Just statistically, that's so hard to do. It's almost impressive. Yeah. And there had to be a plaque up there somewhere, right? I'm like 50 50. She just doesn't read yep. and is a member of Congress. Mm -hmm. The Leah Michelle effect. There are six things in all of Georgia that aren't racist, and she managed to find one of them. Yes. So hard. Yeah. Two are Lucinda. Yeah. <laughs> and with that reminder of my suffering, we're going to close the headlines out for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll be reminded how convoluted and indirect Satan's plan really is. Like a panda had sex with uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. Excellent animal and pre-2000s reference. We love those. Thank you. All right, you go. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic and... Mm -hmm. oh, damn it. Who's that guy who sat on his balls? It's Mr. Belvedere. You got to know this stuff, man. I, don't you think I know that, Heath? Hey, hey, guys. Guys, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. We're just getting ready for Vulgarity for Charity. What's Vulgarity for Charity? Vulgarity for Charity is our annual charity drive that is jointly produced by Puzzle in a Thunderstorm and Cognitive Dissonance Podcasts, the collaborators on Citation Needed. It runs from November 1st through Thanksgiving, and it benefits Modest Needs, a tax-exempt charity that gives emergency grants to folks who are at risk of slipping into poverty and for whom no other source of immediate help is available. Wow. I bet a bunch of folks could use that kind of help these days. They sure could, Noah. Plus, Modest Needs negotiates directly with who folks owe money to and contributes from its own general fund. So it saves the people they help money and cuts out the sketchiness that can happen with other fundraising websites. I mean, that sounds like a great charity and everything, but what's in it for me? I'm so glad you asked, Noah, because that's where we and our friends in the podcastiverse come in. All you have to do is donate $50 or more to modestneeds.org and you can ask us to roast the person of your choice. That's right. It can be a politician. It can be your racist Uncle Steve or even just the concept of capitalism. Just send proof of your donation to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com. That's vulgarity for the word, not the number, charity at gmail.com along with who you'd like us to roast and you could get the asshole of your choice, the roasting they deserve. Don't forget to include a picture if the person isn't famous. And let us know who you want to do the roast. That sounds great, guys. But is there any way you can guarantee that your roast makes it on air? 
You sure can. We'll be choosing 100 random donors and our top 100 donors. So if you donate, you can either give us a lot of money or donate as soon as possible when November 1st rolls around. That's right. Early donors have a much better chance of being randomly selected. Once again, that's 50 bucks to modestneeds.org. Send the proof to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com and let us irritate with ire the idiots who irritate. Okay, he's doing Irrit- the alliteration again. It irritate twice. It, it is that time of year, though, I guess. At least he didn't write it in the script for me to say. Because that's how you talk. Okay, okay. Technically, it should be consonants. If it's alliteration. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's not alliteration anymore if it's vowels. Vowelration. Assonance. One of the first indications I had that Christianity was fucking dumb came when I was a kid in the form of grown adults warning me about the demonic dangers of wearing a Ninja Turtles mask and getting free Reese's cups. (laughs) Well, it turns out they still haven't grown out of being afraid of their own goddamn holiday, which we're going to see once again in this week's installment of... God awful minis. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched five Halloween alternatives for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dark sci fi noir about an early prototype of a preaching robot Pat. doing his best to survive <laughs> while he laments the inevitable march of obsolescence and death. Oh, God, this guy was so fired from the Hall of Presidents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Eli. Plus alternatives for Halloween. (laughs) How bad was this mini? Well, if you get those ads on Facebook about an AI presentation robot you can use for your company, and you were wondering what its worst possible use could be put to, (laughs) you will love this movie. This four-minute video goes places under the skin wasn't brave enough to go to. Yeah. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with best worst. We watch a guy fail the Turing test in a video. Yep. (laughs) Really badly. Best worst Turing test results. Sure, yeah. So I was going to go with best worst blackjack and hookers, right? So the entire idea behind this video is you don't need Halloween. We've got our own Halloween. It's even better than the other. And (laughs) everything that he says is just so sad. If you imagine someone doing any of this shit and like looking outside and seeing kids in costumes with big bags full of candy, and it's just so sad. (laughs) Yeah. Let's have a Reformation Day party instead in their face. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with best worst child endangerment, right? Half of these tips are just going to be, go get your ass kicked, kids. Go get your ass kicked (laughs) hard (laughs) by people. And on the night of anonymity, get out there and pick a bunch of fights, kids. You can do it. Right. Well, everybody's wearing a mask. Good call. All right, so let's dive right in. We're going to start this video off without preamble, which is rough because when you look as weird as this fucking guy, you want to ease people into your visage, right? (laughs) Okay, right away, he shows up. I feel like he's going to murder me in this furniture showroom at the Hallmark store where he lives in this dungeon of that. It's terrifying. He looks like Roblox's first attempt to make a guy. Yeah. Right? Like Roblox all got together. <laughs> he looks like a Nintendo Me character. Yes. Like like an alien tried to dress up as a human Christian using a Nintendo Wii to build himself. Yes. <laughs> yes. His shirt says blessed, but his face says cursed. Yeah. <laughs> also, in the background of his sad little background studio thing, he's got this hotel painting. And it makes me so sad because, you know, he was walking through the ho- Hobby Lobby and saw that on the nine ninety nine shelf and was like, ah, yes, art. Yep. I shall take one <laughs> art for my home. And one art, please. Mm, I like that it looks like a fruit thing. Yeah, so... <laughs> So he starts off by warning us that Halloween comes from a devil holiday from pagans. Yeah. And as he does that, he shows like he needs an example of a devil holiday from pagans. So he shows this dude like dressed up as a skeleton kind of or whatever. And my first note here is use a less fuckable satanic skeleton guy as your example, bro. (laughs) Right? Because we're coming straight off of him. Right? So it's like, I'm Christianity. Here's Satanism. I'm like, I want to fuck Satanism. (laughs) Yeah, Halloween is based on Samhain, the ancient Gaelic festival in which people would make 
music videos for 1980s power ballads and a very yes. beautiful man would be in it with <laughs> steam and smoke rising from everywhere for no reason. <laughs> Where the fuck did he find that? He says, and I quote, that Halloween has, quote, no redeemable qualities as far as the gospel is concerned and doesn't glorify God in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. yeah. Nothing about rising from the dead in the gospels. No, uh -uh, yeah. very, <laughs> or ghosts or anything. Yeah. Imagine looking at your calendar and being like, hmm, does Wednesday glorify God and not following that up with, oh, I am mentally unwell. Yeah. I am unwell. <laughs> But luckily, he has a few alternatives for us to avoid that satanic devil day. But before we get to those, please like and subscribe. You'll see there's a little button. Oh, my God. It's the <laughs> His channel's called Bible Flock Box. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Great SEO for me, but pretty bad for him, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> he has over half a million subscribers, though, I checked. That's, oh, that's yeah. upset. This video has 24,000 views, though. I feel like he bought himself some subscribers, okay? I want probably subscriber. did, although I will say some of the other videos include five facts Jehovah's Witnesses don't want you to know. Ooh. Also, the miracle of turning water into wine explained. And mm -hmm. four reasons Christians should never drink alcohol, which that seems contradictory those two are confusing. To that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then he, he generates engagement, right? He's like, and hey, why not tell me what you're doing for Halloween instead of Halloween in the comments that I wrote in my notes? Is it cry? Because I feel like this guy's going <laughs> to spend it crying. I feel like you write in the comments and then he's like, she's a witch. Got you. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Needless to say, uh, my my comment was removed of when I was. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, so then he gets to his alternatives. He's got five of them for us, technically. So we start off with alternative one. Celebrate Reformation Day. This is the day that Germany sets aside to remember how hard Catholics can go fuck themselves. Okay. <laughs> but he's, he's like, Germany does it. Okay, not all of Germany. Some, Nine sixteenths of Germany does it. A percentage it. of Germany <laughs> does it. Well, if the Germans do it, it can't be bad, right? Yeah. Okay, but Reformation, that's when Protestantism happened as a split from Catholicism. This is a celebration of that time that, you know, we got rid of doing good things in real reality and we made heaven all about magic thinking only. That's the celebration he's describing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Remember that time in 1517 when Martin Luther touched off religious violence and persecution so intractable it would spill into the 21st century? Let's celebrate <laughs> that. And I just have to point out that the way he says excommunicated makes it feel like this is his first time having a mouth on camera. Right? <laughs> like Mark Lar came over and was like, they have mouths, Garklar. You need a mouth. And he was like, I don't know how to fucking use this. Excommunicated. <laughs> up, down, up, down, up, down. Got it. Uh, is it wet in here? Is it wet in the mouth? I say, <laughs> I wrote like his, his cadence is like he thinks he's rhyming, but he's not or something. <laughs> And then so he gives us this little the history of the Reformation, which is really weird because he doesn't mention the violence at all. Nope. Right. It's it like basically ends with and that little Reformation's name was Albert Einstein. <laughs> but then we get my favorite fucking part of this video. And it's tough to choose. This is where he's like, if you would like to learn more, you can buy the movie Luther. And then he teaches us how to buy the movie Luther. <laughs> yes. You go to M. Amazon.com. It's a website, right? You click it and then you a DVD or a Blu-ray. That's all the options I'm going to offer. Those are the options that you get at audience. Amazon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then he goes, and this is the best. Order it now and you will have it by Halloween. Yeah. yeah. And the actors will talk the lines with <laughs> mouths, I think. <laughs> but yeah, it, the, you can watch that on Reformation Day. Give you something to do while everybody else is dressing up, eating candy, and enjoying their existence. And that brings us to alternative number two. <laughs> and, and believe it or not, the first one was the high point, right? That was the best it ever got because alternative number two is to hand out Bible tracts. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> yes. Fuck your face so hard. Ah, <laughs> Well, Halloween's a great opportunity because the non-Christians come to you. You yeah. don't have to knock on their door. You can annoy them on your own porch for a change. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, God, that's so much worse. Bible tracks on Halloween are so much worse than razor blades and candy, right? Like, oh, my God. I would love a razor blade and candy rather than a Bible track. I, you know what? I'm giving out fucking great pumpkin tracks next year. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's my Halloween. Okay. Well, he actually suggests, I would argue, something worse than razor blades in candy. Because then you get candy. He's like, oh, yeah, you can give out the tracts. And also, you know, uh, fucking raisins or apples. <laughs> like an asshole. Like <laughs> yes, a goddamn yes. monster. A healthy snack. But resentfully, he's like, yeah, and I guess if you want to give out healthy snacks, you can as well. And I was like, oh, can we give out Nutricane bars as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you think, how many eggs did you want to cover your fucking house in, my guy? <laughs> At yes. a certain place, you don't live in a house. You live in an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, by the way, he will also happily sell us Bible tracts that you can disappoint children with on your own. That's, uh, the rocks they gave Charlie Brown were to throw at this asshole. <laughs> this guy's, ha yes, he's the season finale for sure. He tries to sell a thing again. It, we're, we're like 45 seconds in and now he's the second time he's trying to sell something to make a nickel on his affiliate link through Amazon. Yes. Uh -huh. You can buy the harassment kits. And, <laughs> don't answer yet. <laughs> Links to all that below. So shitty. That said, I would love for this guy to live in my neighborhood. All right, kids, you enjoyed those comic books. I think you find them very inspiring. Hey. Oh, oh, um, hello. I am not sure if you remember me. I was by like 20 minutes ago with my son. Oh, yes. No, of course. I remember. Yeah. So I got a chance to look at your comic book thing that you gave him and I wanted to bring it back to you. Oh, you're not interested? Uh, No. No, I'm not. But I did wipe my ass on every page, just oh. every single page there. So if you see, as you go through, you'll see I, I just wiped my ass on every single page of this book you gave my son. And now and now and this is really important. I want you to have it. Oh, uh, that is disgusting. Yeah, it is. It is. It's almost as bad as telling a child they're going to burn in fire for eternity. Um. Hey, at least this isn't what my wife wanted to do to you, man. I mean, trust me, this is better. Is that her jumping up and down on my car now? That is her. Correct. That is her. And okay, so by now he's clearly running out of ideas because alternative three is outdoor evangelism. <laughs> As opposed to the indoor evangelism he recommended for alternative two. I, I, I swear, I thought that alternative four was going to be like outdoor evangelism on one foot, you know, or in a hat. Swimming pool. Here on Earth where we all live, lots of people are outside of buildings on Halloween. So they're not protected from you by their buildings where they reside here on Earth as humans. We all are. Yeah, so many people are out. You can draw a much larger crowd. You could even triple it and still have zero people listening. Yeah, definitely go out on Halloween and try to draw a crowd with some evangelism. Yeah. That's I, I love that idea for you. I love it. <laughs> Put on a Christian play. A Christian I play? <laughs> I cannot think of anything that would bring me more joy than encountering <laughs> a Christian play. In, at Halloween while wearing a mask. <laughs> I want to see this guy line up a shitload of people and then try to jump over a line of kids just really bad. He hurts himself. <laughs> he hurts a couple of the kids. The kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here's a pocket Bible. He closes, he says, you know, you can put on a Christian play in the park. And then he adds, he's like, just make sure you get permission from the proper officials of your planet. Yeah, right. Are those officials' voices in your head? The galactic, I mean, the regular, the, this one here. Oh, just regular lactic. Mayor. So then we get alternative four, which is learn about Halloween. Right. So I, like, I feel like he's leading up to watch this video on repeat all night to up my view count. It's only 24th. I have 500,000 subscribers. Okay, but to, to be clear, he means learn how to be a well-researched bigot. Yes. That's what he means. Okay. And as though he was playing into our bit about him being an alien, this is a real quote from the video and it haunts me. It haunts me. Tell your family about Halloween if you have one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. He sure does. I thought he was going to follow up with like, I have one. <laughs> They're made out of meat. They like gave me. birth to me and everything. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, he's, he wants you to learn all about the pagan roots of Halloween. That way you won't look stupid when you tell people that 
Halloween is going to cause a goat demon to corrupt the ghost that drives their body. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're like three minutes in, and he tries to sell another thing. There's <laughs> there's a graphic of how to like and subscribe to his channel yes. and give him money theoretically, <laughs> but it's he's talking through it. It's just like there's a mouse moving, so we learn. Oh, you do, you you do it by clicking with the oh, mouse. Oh, you move the mouse with a little the arrow. I was wondering, button. yes, what this little arrow did. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, part of learning about Halloween is watching his other videos, which is another thing that you could do instead. I have videos about Halloween. This is one of them. Yeah, you're watching one, so you probably know. <laughs> Your eyes remain moist without a touch of the tongue. So just <laughs> continue to watch. And then we get alternative number five, tell inspiring stories. This is the fucking best. <laughs> the last alternative is literally tell people that you're happy or not going to costume parties and eating candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but we could actually trick this guy into doing this, right? If we wrote him an email and we were like, hey, we live in your area, we just lie and say we live. He would invite us into his house and start to tell us about how much he loves Jesus. He would fly back to Earth and go back into <laughs> yeah. that bunker to do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, he's like, it's like telling scary stories, but for cowards. Yeah. So he also says at this point, Halloween, this is a quote. Halloween has pagan roots revolving around superstitious beliefs about ghosts. Like, do you, super, do you, hear, you don't hear it? You don't hear it. Really? <laughs> Turn this negative into a positive by telling the story of uh, our, our, our ghost thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of this, too, he tries to summarize his five points, but he forgets number four. He forgets the learning about Halloween. So even he's not paying attention to this <laughs> yeah. bullshit. Mm -hmm. He's repeating. Reading his five things like a like a middle school essay with like the preponderance <laughs> of evidence, but then he forgets one of his evidences yes. that were in the preponderance. Yeah. It's yeah. So yeah. Dumb. yeah. That said, I would love to go to this guy's house. This guy's house. Heath, thank you so much for accepting my invitation to come over and hear positive stories about the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I, I lost a bet with a coworker, so yeah, here I am. Wonderful. I do have co-workers at my job that I have mm. on Earth. They sure are Mondays. What? Before we begin, may I interest you in some hydrogen? I have fresh tank. Sorry, hydrogen? The element? Yes, I was under... I, 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 don't we... I like hydrogen to for drinking? Do you mean water? Yes, water. Yes, the hydrogen is for the water recipe. What is your water recipe? Hey, man, are you an alien? Very much so, yes. And that's it. That's the whole video. I, he, he says, and if you liked this video, and I'm like, okay, I don't have to keep watching that <laughs> This anymore. is not for me, this part. <laughs> this part is for some other guy. And he, he plugs the affiliate link to buy the DVD <laughs> from Amazon mm -hmm. one more time. Yes, uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you what, judging by my suggested videos on YouTube, we haven't seen the last of PreachBot 2000, but the rest will have to wait until another <laughs> God Awful Mini. Before we prepare for landing, I want to thank everybody in advance that's coming to see us in Manchester, England this weekend. Going to be a hell of a time. And if you can't make it there, we promise to try to be closer to you next time. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show's citation needed debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I can't convert the audio until I thank Heath Enright for Heathing, Lucinda Illusions for Lucinding, and Eli Bosnick for E lying. Wow, he really gets the shit out of that stick, doesn't he? Whoops. I also want to thank Tressa for providing this week's unusually salacious Farnsworth quote. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best bipeds, Mary Rose, Seth Conrad, Kyle, Brittany, Samuel, and quote, I escaped hellscapes of Russia to continue giving you money, end quote. Mary Rose, Seth, and Conrad, whose might is so mighty it's been promoted to shall. Kyle, Brittany, and Samuel, whose IQs are so high they have to put lights on them to warn air traffic. And somebody who escaped Russia, who is too 
badass for hyperbolic compliments to even work on them. And as flattered as we are, we suspect you had other motivations for getting out of Russia, too. Still, I'm glad that you did. Together, these seven savory secularists secured our sacrilegious screeds to the several simoleons this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the income, inclination, and apparently escapability it takes to give us money, but let's face it, it would probably be easier for you than escaping from Russia, right? So, if you'd like to join in on the fun, be sure to make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but you're saving up for that doggy in the window still, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PIATpod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. He does a plane to catch, guys. He does a plane. Yes, right, right. No, absolutely. All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.